come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie book club for movies. It comes around every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. You're probably not. So, hey, whatever you do, uh, just go to wherever you found us and hit that like, subscribe, star button, or hit the little notification bell, anything. Helps all that stuff helps us get found by other people like you. It rises us up through those crazy internet algorithms. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the best start that our audience will never see. No, I really wish they all could have seen what's oh, happened right that now. That was amazing. I didn't even get to see it. They were doing oh this on God. Skype because it's only COVID 19, you're 20. And uh, they're all on Skype and looking at each other, and I have to watch the waveform. Oh, so, yeah. Colin, you missed it. I missed we it. We were Cheeto holding just, it for a good 15 <laughs> seconds there. Oh, my God. Cheeto it. jumped up right to you and just like, hey, what's going on here? What's, uh, what's, all this, what's all this going on? Wait, here's my butt. Bye. Who's Cheeto? Right. Cheeto's, Cheeto's my cat. cat. Yeah. <laughs> Cheetos the cat. This yeah. is uh, probably a uh, relevant. Yeah, she got uh, all three eyes in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, these are the people that you're listening to the internet radio superstars. Michaela. <laughs> Would you all say it at John. the same time? Yeah. I was like, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> we really fucked that up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're not doing good. Holly, introduce yourself. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, was that you or was that the cat inside you? <laughs> inside me. <laughs> this is a very bizarre episode for a very bizarre movie. I'm Colin, by the way, and tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Michaela. That's right. Uh, what did we watch tonight? We watched a movie that I think broke all of our brains, and that's why we can't do this thing we've done a million times before. <laughs> yeah. We watched Uninvited. This is not the Uninvited. <laughs> No, it is not. Okay, so if you're uninvited, uninvited. So this one comes at us from the year 1988, and it is uh, yeah, is it 87, 88? I've seen both written down in the internet. I don't know which one's correct. I was watching the Roman numerals at the end. Filmed in 87 and released in 88. Yeah, the copyright said 87. So, uh, and who is this directed by? Graydon Clark. And who is Graydon Clark? He did a lot of. movies like this and kind of like schlocky movies i was scrolling through his imdb and i was like i need to watch some of these based on title alone he has one called satan's cheerleaders yeah that's a famous drive-in classic (laughs) yeah i need to watch that just based on the title alone that sounds interesting yeah he's got a black exploitation movie called black shampoo (laughs) <laughs> okay. So I'll check that out at some point too. And just a lot of movies like that. Imagine Wait, is like that like, twenty movies like that. Is that like shampoo, but just the black version of it and he called it black shampoo? I don't know. Do you want to see what the cover is though? It takes sure. place in a salon. What working with. Yeah. He also did a movie called uh Without Warning, if I am correct, right? <laughs> Black shampoo. Yes, Black shampoo. Without warning is maybe the most recognizable movie on his. If that's from 1980, had Jack Palance in it. That had like this big, tall alien comes to Earth and throws these like throwing stars that <clears throat> stick to people. Yeah, they, well, they're not throwing stars. They're like a little alien star shaped uh, creatures that he whips at people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kind of like the Predator. Right. He's coming to Earth do? hunting people. Oh, well, they stick on your face, and then you know you scream and yell as you try to get them off. Uh, and yeah. they do. They kill you. I they think just he, kill you. I was just saying, well, I think he like, was like just there for a while, and you're like, hey, or they well. paralyze people. I'm not sure if he was like kind of because for some reason I'm I'm thinking it was a little bit like the predator, like he was on Earth to hunt humans or something like that. I don't know. Can't remember. It's been a it's been a hot minute, but you can look up the trailer. I think Shop Factory put <laughs> we out. Can use the, one of those right now. Yeah. Um, humans that need hunting. So this uh, movie comes at us from the year 1987, which is, uh, I mean, this comes from the 80s, right? I mean, this whole movie is, uh, it's steeped in the 80s, right? Yeah, <laughs> 80s it, fashions. it feels like older than it is, though, because this is like almost the 90s, you know what I'm saying? And it's it feels much earlier than that. And it's also, it's like a specific um 
like the eighties in, in Florida. Yeah. Right. So we got <laughs> a lot of Colin. Well, that's right. Cause it's spring break when yeah. the movie takes place. Eighties in Florida. Oh God. Um, <laughs> copyright 2020 <laughs> pre show. <laughs> the 80s in Florida. This movie's kind of nuts. Like nuts, I don't even know if this describes it. Well, well uh, give us, give us the uh, Michaela. Give us the, give us the log line of this movie. Give us the elevator pitch of this movie. There's a mutant cat that is from a like laboratory. It escapes. It sneaks onto a yacht with spring breakers and rich, shady businessmen trying to go to international waters and. The cat inside the cat comes out of its mouth and poisons people. Now, wait, 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 wait. I just watched this movie and I'm still amazed by what you just said. And you kind of dropped out there. So say that again. I said, I just watched this no. movie and yeah, I'm still amazed by what she just said. The, uh, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, there's a cat inside a cat. That's what makes this movie uh, I don't, not unique because I mean, obviously we've seen this other times. Um, you know, if you've seen the Tales from the Dark Side movie, there's a cat inside of a cat in that one. Or no, the cat jumps into a guy and then comes out of his mouth. The idea of there's a monster inside. So this is th- this is alien on a yacht, right? That's generous, Colin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm, that's I'm, like really giving it a lot of credit there's people going through boiler rooms there's a creature on board this ship that's jumping out of you know misty uh, steam filled pipes and all that stuff and something comes out of another thing's mouth i mean <laughs> i don't think this movie really has the tension or suspense of any alien movie. well right but it is yeah, su- suspense is not something i would tack on to this movie at all <laughs> It does score high in other departments, and that would be the uh, unintentionally hilarious. Who the oh fuck like greenlit this thing? Who <laughs> thought this was a good idea for a movie? How did they get George Kennedy, Oscar winner George Kennedy, <laughs> to star in this movie? Alongside- he probably saw the puppet and was like, I'd do that. I'd really? Do that movie. Really? No, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not talking the, the the creature puppet. I'm talking like just before the creature comes out of the cat cat puppet. That's amazing. The stuffed animal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's amazing. That's, I have that's, to. How does I it have grow to feel like its size. <laughs> I have to assume that you get to a point in your career. You're like, you know what, Oscar? I've got money. I want to do something fun. And this movie just looks like fun, you know, like, I feel like that's where I would get to. Wow. This was all money. I can't believe it was much money, but it's all money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, cause George Kennedy for all of that, uh, it's, the, it's funny you say that cast John. members. So yeah, the, the, the film's budget was $200,000, but 75,000 <laughs> of that went to George Kennedy, Alex Cord and clue. Really? Yes, that's uh, Clue Gulliger is also in this movie wearing some strange buck teeth, uh, fake teeth appliance. That man's got a an acting process that only makes sense to him. Yeah, he's got to. I think that's that, the only explanation. That to me is the sign of an actor who's just like, you know what, this is fucking stupid, and nobody's going to see it. So like, let's try something. You know, like what can I do right. to be weird? Yeah. I've always wanted fake teeth. Yeah. And this is only like three years after Return of the Living Dead, which I think is probably, you know, how horror fans will always remember Clue Gulliger. Um, he, um, and a Nightmare on Elm Street, too. That's right. And a Nightmare on Elm Street, too. In both of those movies, he had, uh, you know, brown hair. In this one, he's uh, gray hair. So it was like, was he dying back in, uh, dying his hair back in the, the mid 80s? Or was this a. I thought you were like, is he dying? I'm like, yeah. he's still going today. No, he's uh <laughs> he's yeah, he's he passed on after the release of um Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I think was maybe oh, yeah. his last screen that was role. His last one. Yeah. He's a bookseller in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um Yeah, George Kennedy, I mean he was an Oscar winner for Cool Hand Luke. He uh was in a ton of fucking movies. I mean, Dirty Dozen, you know, I mean just all these classic movies and then uh Like the Naked Gun, yeah eventually yeah i mean that was his series where he did all the airport movies you remember the big disaster movies of the 1970s he's the only guy who's in all four of those and then he was in all three of the naked gun 
uh, movies. He's in Earthquake, too. That's right, because, I mean, and he was in the kind of sort of disaster movie Delta Force. Oh, God. Right? Where he That's was a one disaster, of the for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. And he was... Uh, also, in a, uh, I guess for a period of time, like he was a regular on Dallas, like for years, he was a character on Dallas. Makes sense. Put that dude in a cowboy hat. Yeah. And then toward the end of his career, well, I don't know. This is the minute, this is before Naked Gun, right? So yeah. before that, the people rediscovered George Kennedy. He did a movie called Uninvited <laughs> about a mutant cat loose on a yacht <laughs> that kills people. I just okay. want to see him on the Johnny Carson show <laughs> for that movie. Yeah. It's like, uh, just George, have George. that Q&A and go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, I did it for money. That was a money dump. <laughs> He's very serious. Here he plays a uh, stockbroker. Was he a stockbroker? He's the muscle. Uh, right? Because Alex Cord, who we will all, of course, remember from Airwolf. Anyone? Airwolf? No? Okay, I'll give you a tie-in to last week's movie, right? He was in the movie Grey Eagle, playing Grey Eagle, which was directed by uh. Charles B. Pierce, who directed The Town That Dreaded Sundown and The Legend of Boggy Creek. Um, well, so Alex Cord is like, he's um, this multi-million dollar, um, is he an inv- investment banker or something like that, right? In this movie? Yeah. yeah. Very slimy it's dude. Yeah, it's skimming off the top, apparently. And he has somehow defrauded somebody, and so he's got this money. That he's got to get to the Cayman Islands on his yacht. And George Kennedy and Clue Gulliger are his co-conspirators in this crime. And so they're going to take this yacht. This is the whole idea. They're going to take a yacht and uh, make a beeline to the Cayman Islands before the SEC gets a hold of them. And uh, then they're going to be rich once they get there. Okay, so that's the general setup. But prior to this, there are there's this scene. The movie opens in a uh, you know top secret laboratory. Where do we know what kind of tests they're doing? None. No, it's not. No idea. No, I mean uh, n- no. In as much as when they start hitting the red alert and saying uh, that get the damn cat, it's escaped. And it's like this a radiation leak. Like, what are they doing? <laughs> to this cat yeah it goes like from uh one to a hundred like really quick right real it's, quick they're like they get a cat out of uh one of these cages and they're gonna give it an injection i think they do right they give it an injection of well, what well, they try know. and then uh the cat gets loose and it's very quickly here that we see the cats loose running around and they're like armed with pistols right they're like we got to kill that cat it can't get out they didn't you know, call the army or anything, right? Because you got to you got to shut this down. You can't let anybody know that this thing has escaped. And in the stairwell, it attacks a security guard, and we see this amazing special effect for the first time when the cat wrenches back its jaws, and this little demon cat thing comes out of it and attacks the dude, sprays blood all over the place when it kills him. Now, shocking, shocking, Colin. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell are here? This might be like the greatest cold open to a movie ever, right? That's, that's the greatest grab you moment I've seen in a while. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I guess I expected it because I did look up like uh, either a trailer or the uh, some imagery or something from the movie. But if you haven't, like, this, you were like, wait, wait what's happening? <laughs> uh, were you expecting that? No, the only thing of this movie that I saw was I saw Colin's uh, what Colin posted on our social media what we were watching, and, I, and it was the this fake cat head. That was my only reference to what we were getting into. And I was like, what the fuck are yeah, we going to watch? Me too. I was just like, what are we, <laughs> why are we doing this? <laughs> Cause we're looking for undiscovered classics shot of this That's <laughs> true. amazing That's true. genre of overlooked, uh, mystery science theater should do them. Maybe they have, uh, yeah, they've, yeah, they've done this. Okay. I was uh, get a 4k restoration. Mm-hmm. I that, think it's discovered. That's right. That was kind of shocking. When we pulled this up, it was like now remastered in 4K. Like, what? <laughs> Thank you, Vinegar Syndrome. <laughs> yeah, I want to know the price tag on that. You're going to buy it, aren't you, Sean? No. No, because you want to watch all the commentary. I mean, maybe. What's on that disc? <laughs> <laughs> 
How? Oh, what was it? This is an amazing movies production. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if there is a, a full like 30 minutes on the cat puppet, I'll buy that Blu-ray. That's what I'm saying. You're going to have all the questions you have about how Uninvited came to be answered by uh, buying that uh, that Blu-ray. It's going to be a two-second interview. They're going to cut the guys going to be like, cocaine. And they're going to cut away, and that's going to be it. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see if Sean liked this. I mean, he likes spookies. So, you know, I mean, that also is a Vinegar Syndrome release. And this is kind of in that wheelhouse, it seems like. But we'll find out. It kind of is, yeah. At the end of this movie, at uh, the end of this episode. So, you know me. The cat. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got a pretty good idea. <laughs> well, screw you guys. I hate this movie. Now he's going to be contrary and just because we said Now he's going to vote no. Yeah. Well, this cat while gets. I'm, while I'm ordering the Blu ray on my phone. Right, he's doing it right now. <laughs> yeah, you can't see this listener, but. Um, this movie, I never watch it again. Yes, Amazon, please. I, 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 turn, I turn my camera a little bit, and there's already a poster up behind me. <laughs> <laughs> he's been worshiping this movie for years uh okay so what happens next i mean how does this cat like escape from this top secret facility or at least the parking garage it runs out and then it gets cornered <laughs> this is my favorite part when he gets cornered by the guy with the train gun yeah and it's like a dirty hairy type standoff between him and this cat <laughs> yeah it's like you know the guy's pointing the camera directly at the camera and the cat's like sitting there going Rawr! As it, this other thing explodes out of it, explodes out of it, does not capture. I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe this. It like slithers it, out. It forces its way out. Yeah. <laughs> so they basically, they got this orange tabby cat. Is that right? A tabby cat? And yeah, they switch out the, for the close ups of the head, uh, this puppet cat. And then, you know, I mean, it's just got this oversized like grin. And they got it another puppet. Like Cheshire cat. Yeah, okay, there you go. But the the thing's eyes actually lit up at one point when there's a scene later where the demon cat I keep saying demon cat, it's not, right? It's a it's a it's a marvel of medical well, science. We don't know. Yeah, but science. Maybe they created were experimenting it. with the occult in that lab. Right. Yeah. So the other cat, the little one, the crazy killer deformed monster cat, at one point does crawl back into the cat's uh it's, this is you gotta see this. I mean, I don't know, I can't <laughs> <laughs> Can't describe it in any way that's going to do it justice. Um, unless you, you could probably do this with a pair of socks or something. Um, anyway, so sock puppets. <laughs> please, please. All right, stop. stop you now. Mind demonstrating? Yeah. Yeah. Stop we need to now. take a pause and see some sock puppets right yeah. now. I want, I want, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Colin. Could you show me? <laughs> this is like, it's like a sex ed class. There you go. You Instead put of the a, condom over the banana. Yeah. You, right, you one put, cat you could, loves another cat, <laughs> smaller cat. You put some beady eyes on the okay, so um <laughs> so the uh so the cat gets out, gets into the wild, and uh in the wild it is found by this guy, right, who's just trying to oh you poor little cat and he's trying to pet the thing. And then another guy walks up, this is at like a mobile station or something, and the guy comes up to him and is like, Hey buddy, you got change for the you know, cigarette machine? And then he fucking hits the guy and mugs him, right? Gets in his pickup truck with his buddy, and they're like, "Yeah, hey, we got some enough money to pay for our beer, or whatever." But this cat has smuggled itself away on the bed of the pickup truck. No, it didn't. I distinctly saw the hand that threw it into the, bed of the truck, <laughs> <laughs> right oh, yeah, there in frame. Just like in the parking garage when he attacks the guy through the like sunroof of the car, you can see the two poles moving the puppet like. Right through the windshield of the car. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not subtle. Not subtle. Everything, it's all there on a screen for you to see. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, and then it attacks the guys in the in the uh, pickup truck. It, like, busts through the back of the, and you see it, it uh, attaches itself to the guy's neck, and the whole it pickup truck goes truck up. to roll down a hill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that was missing now, was an explosion. It's awesome. Yeah. Now, Colin, you said something earlier, which... I thought was pretty true that they blew their load early as far as the cat inside a cat reveal. Now, I think I agree watching these first few, like, wouldn't it be uh, more interesting if these first like four killings, like were so we see, radical, like, but, but we didn't know why. And like, and like eventually we get like some shadow, like you see the shadow of it coming out of the cat, like implying what's happening, like right. work like, up we to did, it. We saw that. 
but that was like, yeah, after we already saw Cat out of it. Yeah, it should, it should work up to it, yeah. 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 That was a, a bigger reveal a little bit later on, like, the boat. Right, because it's basically, that's all we're going to do for the rest of this movie is uh, you're going to see a cat, and at some point, another cat's going to come out of the cat. We're going to switch the, the fake cat head. Little cat comes out. Little cat really doesn't actually run around on its own too much does it like am i until the end my image of it is always it hanging out of the other cat maybe it just goes to point of view or something when it can attack people and whatever until the end at the end it's fully out of the other cat. oh okay that's right that's right when it's a, but yeah. yeah before that it's almost like you don't even know if it's a whole cat or if it's just like alien and it's like a little head because how it comes out of the mouth yeah exactly yeah end, it's like a little cat out. tongue or something pops out there um so then we get introduced to our characters, right? Uh, for the for the main main voyage of this movie, um, we already know that we got the thing going on with the bankers, and they're shady guys because uh, we see at an early point in the movie uh, they kill uh, this guy who uh, was in in the scheme with them or whatever, and they drown him in a in a hot tub. Right? Yeah, Clue has a heart attack while, dr- while drowning him in a hot tub. Right, because Clue's got to do the job of uh, drowning the guy, and George Kennedy's just holding the gun on him, and you know it's all blackmail. It's very. Uh, are they talking about blackmail? They, they, he, they're afraid he's going to blackmail them, I guess, because of the shady deal that they did. And uh, then we're also introduced to uh, Suzanne and Bobby, which are two yes. girls in. Uh, we are introduced to them in these fantastic 80s swimwear sw- slash slashed like slashed shirts yeah yeah there's a thing is this still a thing i'm not up on my fashion ladies you gotta help me out it is and it's unfortunate <laughs> it it is but not to this degree like not that many different types of like cuts in a shirt yeah yeah no that was that was a very distinct time that a slashed up shirt was an appropriate swim cover up yeah. Often, often it involved like some self-done fringing with beads. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was the thing. I had like a swim cover when I was like really young. That was very much like this. It it, it was a thing, but not anymore. It's very eighties. Yeah, this is very like uh, very basic. Then it's very like Freddy Krueger just kind of got to your shirt and slashed the shit out of it, and you wear that over your swimsuit. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway. They get, uh, they meet uh, Alex Cord's character, whose name now I can't remember, Mr. Wyndham or something like that, right? I don't know. He's, uh, Walter. Walter. Graham? Is it Graham? Maybe. Something like that. But something they, like that. They meet him at a hotel and recognize that this guy's a meal ticket. And so they kind of hit on him. He hits on them and he invites them to come out to uh, on board the yacht because secretly in the back of his mind is like, you know, if the sec starts looking for us, having two pretty girls on board is going to somehow throw them off. That's, that's, uh, that is not the reason. He invites <laughs> <you on board. laughs> well, that's what he tells you, the other have guys. You, have you forgotten about sex? No. Yeah. He, well, clearly that's like his, uh, his, well, that's what he tells. That's, I guess that's his reasoning for, for uh, inviting them on that. He tells to George Kennedy and clue Gulliger, but yeah, he has his designs on these women. I do something for you. You're doing something for me. Wink, 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 wink. Yeah. And I don't forget. Yeah. He's a very slimy guy. <laughs> this guy. Um, yeah. Then we're also introduced to, but the girls, right? Wait, question. Did the girls go onto the yacht and have a party that completely destroyed the yacht and they had a bunch of food and, oh, it was a crazy night last night. And then, yes. okay, so they don't, we don't see this scene, but so we get the idea that they did go on there and partied with him. Yeah, right. Yeah, the the timeline we're seeing is the girls meet him at the hotel, and then he's like, "Wait here, I'm going to send a car to pick you up, and you're going to come to our party." So he leaves, go, takes his yacht out, kills the guy in the hot tub, and then comes back and picks up people for a party. Okay, all right. That's the timeline we're seeing. Okay. Then the next day, then he's like, we got to get out of here because the feds are coming. And so, but the girls have met these three other guys that are lounging at the resort or whatever. Did they know them at all? I don't think no. so. No, no. Like, and would, okay. The last place I'm going with strangers is on a boat. Right. Like everything about this. It was like, also 
in a sugar daddy situation, you typically don't bring other guys. Just no. putting it's that up. <laughs> yeah. Well, they explain it though, because they're going to use these guys to just in case like uh, he gets handsy. Although I assume that this already happened if they already spent the night on the boat, like, and we just didn't see that scene where they had the party, but right. Aren't they bringing the guys on as basically like to run interference? Like they're going to manipulate the wealthy guy. Cause even the, the, some of these guys are like, Oh, it's Winston Co- or Winston Graham or Walter Graham or whatever. He's on the cover of Forbes magazine. He's a big money trader. Yeah, Wall Street, Walter. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't want to kind of get in there next to him because, you know, hey, I mean, you know, gold has a luster that just kind of, right? You want to bathe in it. You want to get close to it. You get close to the money. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I mean, you know, not off this guy. But they, uh, they end up on the way to the boat where one of the guys gets sick on the dock. He gets land sick, right? Because he can't go on the boat. Right? <laughs> he gets Lance. land sick. Yeah. He throws up all over the place because he's seasick and he's standing on the dock. Uh, Suzanne, the he blonde. He throws up as soon as he steps in the boat. It has not even pulled away from the dock yet. He has not felt yeah. the ocean at all. And yeah. this never comes up again. He's fine, like, actually, once he gets on the water. Um, yeah. At one point, they're on the yacht and they're like, How are you feeling? He's like, Oh, I feel great. Now, as someone who has, who does get motion sickness and has gotten it on a boat, it does not go away like that. It is with you the rest of the day. Unless he got like a three hour nap in at some point, he is going to feel like shit the rest of the day. Like, cause even if you take Dramamine, you have to like take it beforehand. Like once yeah. you're already seasick, Dramamine doesn't really help. So like there's, once it happens, there's nothing you can do about it. Unless you like take the Dramamine and then sleep for four hours, then yeah, it might help. But otherwise like you're going to be sick the rest of the day. These are good tips, listener. I hope you're taking <laughs> taking notes the next time you go out on the water. That's the people that made this movie know nothing about sea sickness and know nothing about cats. I'm standing by that. Or plot or drama or, I mean, a lot of things. But um, so they, uh, yeah, because the dialogue, the dialogue is uh, priceless. I mean, it's just a bunch of people like stating things to each other. The actors, I actually thought, like, did a pretty good job. I've seen movies with worse actors in it yeah. and Alex Cord's will, going all say, in. <clears throat> yeah. I will say a lot of these actors were really given it. their all. Yeah. Even though I'll it's like, that. <laughs> this kind of movie that you're in buddy is, uh, but yeah, they're like, no, it's a pain job. We're going to treat it seriously. Except clue Gulliger. Who's like having a laugh at everybody's, you know, it's like, hey, you guys are paying me to put these fucking teeth in. And, um, he was like going full on Jerry Lewis with this movie. <laughs> that's what I got. Yeah, that's yeah. what that reminded me of. Yeah, it's a minor professor. Um, <laughs> they end up. Maybe that was his inspiration. See, you're going to have to buy this Blu-ray, Sean, so we can find out from the commentary track if Clue Gulliger was inspired by the Nutty Professor. <laughs> yeah, God, for his Again, role. Can guarantee me an answer to that question <laughs> on the Blu-ray. <laughs> sure. Dear listener, if you have purchased Uninvited on Blu-ray and... Oh, uh, please let us know. That's right. Let Sean know because don't tell him too much. You know, you're just enough because he will buy it. Um, So the cat, the cat makes it onto this yacht because somehow after this catastrophic wreck and the um the pickup truck will go over the cliff, the cat ends up in the garbage can right next to the dock. Right? So it's like, yes. okay, sure. Yes. Why not? It's doing a lot of meowing. Then when we see so the much cat, meowing, this cat is like full on like cat screaming. There's cat screams. Well, okay, the foley is telling us the cat is screaming. The cat's not actually screaming. Oh yeah, the it's- cat's not actually making any noises, which makes me believe that the cat, the demon cat inside the cat, is the one screaming. I think it was just a case of the foley artist being like, "We need to make sure people don't forget there's a cat in this scene right now." <laughs> that that really came across later on in the exercise scene. Where it's yeah. like five minutes between the two characters, and I don't even think it paid <laughs> off in that scene. In three minutes. Where is this hat? <laughs> yeah, did it even pay off in that scene? I don't think it did. Oh, it did well, at, yeah, the, yeah, the, at the end. No, right. that was the ankle biting. Scene. Yep, 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 yeah, yeah, yep, you're right. Um, so the cat gets on board, and uh, then we get to know, and there's another character. There's also the um, captain. Uh, she is the daughter of the guy that somehow Alex Cord like fucked him over and stole his boat or something. 
legally like got possession of his boat. She wants it's a the whole boat. Bunch of who cares? <clears throat> yeah. She, you will remember, of course, from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Leatherface. No? Anybody? Nope. She was the blonde girl out in the woods. Um, nope. <laughs> so, um, so that's basically the whole setup, right? So they're gonna they're gonna ride this whole thing out and get out to the Cayman Islands, but disaster strikes. What happens well, I mean, first? They, they, well, they all get assigned jobs first of all. Well, right, because they need is, a crew. Somehow he like uh, he belittled the crew, so they all quit. Yeah, but they got to take now off. He now. wants to leave real quick because the SEC's on his ass. So they're like, "All right, you guys are the crew. Let's go." Which I would have been done right there. I'm just like, I'm not cleaning this shit up. I'm not working on this boat. <laughs> Seems like a bullshit deal. Yeah, but I mean, what? You know, what are you gonna do? Well, you're the cook, and you're the maid, and what were the other positions? You're not the pilot, obviously. But yeah. Well, the the reason the reason the guys agreed to it is the same reason that the girls agreed to get on the boat in the first place because none of them actually had a hotel room, so they needed a place to stay. Yeah. And they're hoping to hook up with the girls, right? Yes. This is a relentlessly sexy movie. One of the sexiest movies that we've watched on the freak show in a while. Girls in bikinis wandering around, sunning themselves. Relentlessly sexy. Pussy everywhere. And they can put that on the box. And it'd be true. There you go. On the Blu-ray case. We just sold extra I'm copies buying. of this vinegar syndrome <laughs> disc right there. Put that on the box. At this point, Sean's just trying to come up reasons to buy this. He's just like, I'm going to buy it. Now I'm just making up excuses. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's a good. So, I mean, basically, then the sexual dynamics on the boat become like a big, uh, big deal. You got people pairing off with people, people trying to pair off with other people and cutting in third wheels and. You know, and then so you got the the biologist is one of the guys that they picked up. He's the third wheel. He ends up uh, uh, taking a shine to the captain. Uh, of course, I can't believe he's a third wheel. He's like the most appealing of all three of them. That makes no sense to me. But his his gorgeous hair, his beard, <laughs> his he's even got the smart guy glasses that he puts on. I know. <laughs> Sign me up. Oh, that's wonderful. You gotta have the the smart guy. Then the other guy, the other guy that you recognize from Silk Stockings. What's his name? Uh, yes, uh, um, Rob Estes. Rob Estes. Yeah, he's Since Mr. Ivy League. Yeah, he's like Gilmore Girls. He's Mr. Ivy League pre-law. I've always wondered about that. I'm not like into you know pre-law. I mean, you're pre-law, then you're post-law, and then you're just no, law. pre-law, then you're law. Okay. Yeah, pre-law, then you're a lawyer. Right? And then you pass the bar exam, and then you're yeah. maybe that's it. Okay, uh, I'm law. I'm showing my ignorance here. You're like, law school. You're like if you're pre law, you're you know going for your like bachelor's, heading into law school kind of thing. And then there's also the jock. I assume is the other guy who's got the hickey, right? Who's I think so. Was that a birthmark I or a hickey? Don't know if that was a birthmark or a hickey. Felt like yes. a birthmark. I think it was probably a birthmark, but it definitely looked like a hickey. All right, because these are playboys. They're out on the town. They hook up with these hot girls. The girls lure them back to. And they're like, "Okay, we're going on this yacht journey, and we're going to be average looking dudes, Colin." So no, the the girl. Well, I don't know. I mean, it sounds like they're you know like uh, you know playing the field. Dude's got. I read it as he's got a hickey on his neck. Yeah, hickey on the neck. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so I think they were and then playboys. I, the one dude was trying out like blue steel there a little bit, just. He's what? Like he was. That's great, that's great for an uh, audio it, podcast, Sean. Isn't that the, the look from Zoolander, Blue Steel? <laughs> Blue oh, Steel, oh, yeah. But, okay. but no one can see that. That's right. I can't they see understand. it. <laughs> I had no idea what you were talking about. I can't see it. So, Colin, you're missing a lot. I know. Probably, yeah. Um, we should put these things in. We should record them and put them up on YouTube. Um, so the cat starts killing members of the crew. I think it starts with Clue Gulliger. Right? Yeah. Did he get it first? Yeah. So Clue gets drunk one night, you know, while the party's happening in the back, and he's supposed to be driving the ship, and then uh, the captain relieves him. He goes out, and the cat attacks him, and so this scene is like, um, 
I, I think he stumbles upon the cat. The cat, you know, the demon cat comes out. He's standing there transfixed, can't run, can't do anything, of course, because, I mean, the guy is just uh, mortified and frozen in place by terror, I assume, right? And the thing jumps on him and scratches him. And then a bizarre and strange thing starts to happen where his face starts to uh, bubble, you know, because they got those, the 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 old 80s uh, latex bladder effect, you know? There's yeah. something bubbling underneath the skin and he's screaming. And we said, this was the Oscar moment where he's just like, and close like up, five, just screaming into the air for like five minutes. Wonderful. Yeah. And there's blood all over his face and there's blood bursting out of his neck and all this other stuff. And we're like, what the hell's going on here? And then he falls over the side of the boat and there he goes. Mm-hmm. Cool going here, ladies and gentlemen, a hand a round of applause for his amazing performance in uninvited. Um, who gets it next? I think it's George Kennedy. Okay, so this is the aforementioned big attack scene, aerobics scene, where uh, one of the girls is doing the yeah, one of the girls is doing aerobics to '80s music. Uh, This is a song. All the songs were written by the same guy, I think. And uh, Michaela was like, "This is going to get stuck in my head." (laughs) You remember what it is? It was like the same three lines repeated over and over again for the whole scene. That's why it's going to get stuck in my head. That's music right there. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, Cord comes in, right? Uh, and he's like, uh, hey, baby, you've been playing around this whole time, and now we're going to get down to business, and basically tries to rape her. Uh, Lance interrupts this, and he's like, hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Get off of her. And then George Kennedy comes in and shoots Lance. <laughs> <laughs> Just barges in shoot. Yeah, <laughs> this happens so quickly. It's like fuck these punk kids; they're gonna die. And then the the mutant cat attacks George Kennedy and like rips the whole like back of his uh, Achilles tendon out. Yeah, bites his like back, ankle, and Achilles, and all that stuff in like full view of everybody. Right? They're all yep. staring at it as this happens, and they don't do anything to help him. No, mm-hmm. no, and then they're I mean, like, I wouldn't either. They're like, what happened? And he's like, it's the cat. Was that cat? And you're like, well, didn't everybody just fucking see this? Because you were in the right. same room. I mean, I don't know. I, maybe the cat. Maybe like everyone should have known what was going on. It was while he went past the dresser, right? And the cat just kind of grabbed his foot, and pulled it behind the dresser, or something like that. And so they no, this see was the, he was being dragged away. The, the cat was the under room. a chair. Yeah. Under the chair. There you go. Nobody saw the yeah. cat because it was under the chair. And so George Kennedy now is bleeding profusely all over the place. And everybody rushes to Lance and they're like, you know, we got to, I actually thought at one point, cause like, it looked like George Kennedy was having a heart attack and the, a guy comes over to him and he starts like loosening his shirt. I thought they were going to take his shirt off and use it as a tourniquet for Lance. <laughs> but unfortunately that That'd didn't happen. Um, that would have been funny. <laughs> Here's the thing though. Is the cat kind of the hero of the movie at this point? Yes. <laughs> it's attacking all the right people. <laughs> uh, well i'm, I'm thinking true. at one point yeah what did the cat i thought because there was a scene i thought where i thought it was this one i thought it was the one where uh um the alex uh it's alex cord right was uh, trying to molest the well, girl yeah that the cat was like you see the cat sitting there he's just a cat and then you see it like when uh, whenever he's assaulting her, the cat's like, Rawr! and it's getting all, you know, right. And you're like, is it going to defend her? Is that what's going on here? It's like, you're the bad guy. Yeah, it's going to tear you up as the scene goes on. We can hear it. <laughs> it's getting very angry at what's happening. Okay. But it doesn't attack him. It attacks George Kennedy when he comes in because the scene, all of a sudden, like I said, they put the pedal down all of a sudden and it's like, whoa, oh, here we go. <laughs> people are <Murder>. shooting. <laughs> Cats are ripping legs out of people. It's amazing. Yep. And then strange things ha- thing happens to George Kennedy where not strange enough. Well, what, no, tell me what, what, what'd you see here? I mean, he, 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 he's, 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 he bubbles. I mean, he's having, he's having problems. It's like, he's got bad gas. So like huge bubbles popping up through the skin on his chest. Yeah. And his stomach and his, his leg begins to pulse. Like, like he's got a huge vein in there. He starts to squirt blood, and then he, uh, I think, uh, yeah, from his stomach, huge bubbles start to come up. And we're instantly and reminded of a scene in Alien where a thing comes out of a guy's chest, because that's what it looks like. It looks like something is about to pop out of this guy's chest, 
See, I was reminded more of Slaughter High when the guy drinks the bad beer and his stomach Oh, yeah. Explodes. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that also would have been, yeah. Well, I mean, he's lying down and this is, and then they're all around him. And then all of a sudden he dies. And that's the end of the scene. The little bubble like deflates. And I'm like, what? Like, yeah. Either a demon cat had to jump out of him or he had to explode in a big, you know, blood, bur- blood balloon burst or something like that. But no, I was really hoping he'd like they do a simple one where you'd hear a pop because they oh the greatest cut ever. He's having these problems and his stomach's bubbling up and they cut to all like six people like really close looking over him, which is the greatest <laughs> shot in the world. And I really wanted to just hear a pop and see blood splatter across their faces. Yeah, uh-huh. it, it was a very else. like sitcom yeah. shot, wasn't it? It was. It was. Yeah, it was glorious. It's like when it's the come when someone like passes out and they do the POV shot of everyone looking over them while yeah. they come to. That's what it was. Yeah, it was something else. <laughs> the whole scene orchestrated, but, executed with a plum. I mean, it was. But it, I mean, it really was. And they they cut to <laughs> them them bearing C. No, that right. was that the next it's, person. It's. Both, because when they do it again, I laugh so loud. Me too. They cut to the same thing. It was like, the well, funniest, there goes another one. Funniest smash cut of my life. Ah. Just hard cut to them dumping his body overboard. Yep. yep. It's like, well, there he goes. Uh, the let's see, the other guy, because I believe um, I'm trying to remember because I know uh, Suzanne at some point gets a little bit of sexy time with your guy from Silk Stockings, because it turns out they were both in Silk Stockings at, at the, the same time, these two actors. Um, but then it went to Lance and the other girl, Bonnie. And for some reason, I can't remember what happened to him, but his arm went numb prior to this, right? <laughs> and she's like, you know, yeah. I, I can make you feel better. And so they start he making shot, out. He got shot in that arm. So oh, that's what. That's right. He got shot like, in the arm. He yeah. like grazed his arm. It did. It was just like, whoosh. yeah, a little graze. And he's like, I can't. I can't feel a thing. Didn't he say he couldn't move it too? Yeah. 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 But I can feel other parts of my body just fine. <laughs> oh god. And uh, so as she's making, I guess his arms under a sheet, and they. What would I can't even remember what. Tim, but they go back the sheet. And it turns out the fucking demon cat is there and it's eating up his fingers and his fingers are lying around in a big puddle of blood and it's just gnawing on the end bloody stump at the end of his hand. I, I, I love when something like that is happening. The people sit there and scream. Mm-hmm. Like, it's my favorite reaction to anything like this because I'd be <laughs> up on my feet running somewhere. Yeah. But no, they're just like, ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Just letting it happen. It, it, it needed all it needed was that zoom in, zoom out real quick on the face, you know, as they're screaming. <laughs> ah, <you're> right. <laughs> um, but so the two of them, right? Because he's like, ah, it's I've been poisoned. I've been poisoned. Because I think <laughs> we established this before. We didn't in the in the in our comments here, but the movie establishes the biologist figures this out and tells us mm-hmm. that the cat has been full of some kind of poison. And so it's got mutant blood or whatever, and this chemical. It's a venomous cat. So it's a right. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Poisonous cat. Cat bite can kill you. Venomous. There's a difference. Oh shit. Okay. So it venomous feels- is when something bo- bites you and it poisons you. Poisonous is when you eat something and it poisons you. Oh. oh, oh okay. Don't say we never taught you. <laughs> there you go. It's true. Yeah. Everybody else not eat the cat. Everybody else is taking notes. Um. So the so now infected with the venom from the cat the uh pair of them go to the you know the guy's screaming i've been poisoned i think he is saying poison though and uh he falls off the edge of the boat and somehow drags her with him into the ocean and And why can't she recover right yeah what happened to her nothing well she just drowns because she felt like it yeah, I don't know what uh, what happened there, because actually I blinked or something or I was answering a text on my phone and I looked back up and then it was, you know, I think uh, the next day or next morning and everybody's gathered around. I'm like, hey, what happened to Bobby? <laughs> like, oh, she wants to drown because you see the other two guys jump in or the other, sorry, the other two people. Uh, isn't it? Um, yeah, Suzanne and the other guy jump in to try and rescue them. Yeah. And then we see them the next day. So it's like, OK, so swimming with socks on. Right. 
Yeah, we see him next, and we see him that night. I get around the fire, just like it's too bad they sank straight to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> It's like, well, how did she manage that? She she can't like even stay afloat. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. That's what I was like. What? Yeah, she wasn't infected with the venom. Um, she just can't swim, apparently. But as but the part where he's like leaning over the railing, holding his hand down, he's like, "I'm already gone. I've already been poisoned." Like that goes on for so long before he even throws himself over. Everybody's going for their Oscar in this movie. Yeah, I think that. that yeah. This will, I can at least put this on my reel. <laughs> this will be a good moment. Um, well, we forgot to mention, too, that at some point, the evil, dastardly uh, Walter, whatever, the head honcho here, he pulls a gun on everybody, and he's like, you're going to do what I say, and, you know, you're driving this boat. Oh, because, uh, yeah, the captain's like, we can't, you know, we got to, like, turn around. We got to get medical attention to the first guy who gets injured, um, George Kennedy, I think, right? And he's like, no, it's so much like Quint, he destroys the, all the communication equipment, shoots, you know, the radio and rips everything else off. But then, correct me if I'm wrong here, I might be a little hazy because, again, I don't know if I'm paying attention to this part, but I think the cat chews through the hull and pops a hole in the bottom of the boat. It, because didn't it say that at some point before it had done this to, like, isn't the cat running around sabotaging the boat, like ruining the engine? And then, like, poisoning I the food. And then take his little hand and, like, mess with the lever and electrocute something. <laughs> right. But didn't Rob Estes shoot a hole in, uh, in the hull of the boat when he was going after the cat? Maybe yeah. that's what happened. Okay, so now the yeah. boat is going down. So. It's filling with water. And uh, I don't even know if they know that yet, actually, because uh, uh, there's this part where I believe where you said the greatest line is a Holly, right? So the greatest line in this movie is coming up where they're they're resigned <laughs> to their fate it's like the engine doesn't work and we're stuck out here and nobody can fix it and so uh uh walter is freaking out and Su- yeah suzanne's freaking out she's lost it she's laughing hysterically and uh walter's like we're all gonna die there's no this is the end kid you just gotta and the captain comes up to her and what does he say to her <laughs> she's all like you know you can't give up and all this stuff and he's like <laughs> Or she said, yeah, I'm not giving up. <laughs> he's like, he's like, well, at least you're consistent. You're still a dumb bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you're still a dumb bitch. <laughs> that was amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt. I'll buy it. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Put it on a t-shirt with like the cat from this movie. It'd be really confusing for everyone. That'd be pretty good. <laughs> well, so that was it after Rob the Estes t-shirt comes with the Blu-ray. I'll buy it. There you go. Again, it might. At that, Sean, at this point, you're going to be like, <laughs> if the case is blue, I'm going to buy the Blu-ray. <laughs> if the Blu-ray comes with a cat, I'll buy it. I think Cheeto will want to watch this again, Sean. So yeah, it's buy it for her. This is going to be Cheeto's favorite movie. You want to watch it again? Aw, Cheeto. How many orange cat idols does she have to look up to, Sean? <laughs> That's right. None. How many? How many, any how many killer cat movies have we done? Because we did Strays. That was the one that's usually like the outlier. But that is like the killer cat. Cats attack. It's the birds only with cats. That movie is awesome. <laughs> we did that. We also did Pet Cemetery. Two versions of it, of course. So, I mean, and we get. I know. And sleep, Sleepwalkers count. Sleep that's walkers. right. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I forgot about Sleepwalkers. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. You know what I would love to see? So, I would love a sequel to this movie that. It's a crossover between this and Sleepwalkers where Clovis from Sleepwalkers <laughs> goes to take on the cat from this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because that's right. This was like a low-key prequel. That's what the it, cat people it, are born. It could, with the way it ends. That's can we true. Just, can we just make movies that connect to obscure 80s movies that nobody's seen? Can we just make movies like that? I think that's how, yeah, that's that's how some of the greatest movies ever start out. You just go like, I want to take this character, this situation from this 80s movie and make a sequel to it. You just call it something yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, the Italians did this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we so... We have a lot of cat knowledge between us, too. That's right. I mean, definitely a very good cat movie. Yeah, that's true. true. At this point, we know well, what you haven't like seen. That's coming out of the vent and in the in strays well the cat comes out of the vent in this that's why i was like how did it unbolt that whatever you're not supposed to it just knocks the vent out we cover asked open. that on the strays episode too how did it unbolt it yeah the, you imagine the little one coming out thinking it's little paws and just turning screws 
Yeah. I know. I wanted to see that. Yeah. I mean, we see it do a whole bunch of other stuff that's kind of weird. So it's like, how come we can't do that? Um, you're Rob Estes, guy. Because you need those. You need cat hands on a stick. Which I can <laughs> yeah. only, they, they only had it though. That that was going on in this movie. I swear to God, when it was <laughs> clawing at people's faces, it was the cat hands on a stick. Um, <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, so Rob Estes, he goes <laughs> off on a plan to actually contain and kill this cat, and he's like laying poison tuna or something all over the ship. But the cat turns out is Apparently it more Walter wants to eat? Yeah, and it's more it's more intelligent than you give it credit for because the thing actually corners him and attacks him. Does he get like? Does he shoot it and he hits uh, some a steam valve that hits him in the I face think... and boils his so. face? It- it looks like he shoots the cat and it explodes in a ball of dust. But I think he hits a steam vent and that's why he dies. Yeah. And the cat's looking at him going, ha ha, meow. we get to see this. I mean, like this thing is, this is a terrible looking rubber puppy, you know, and they shoot it full on. I mean, you're seeing it. There's nothing to disguise how bad this effect is every time. They oh, no, it's right out there in the open. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> wow. Proud of it. Yeah. Like, look at what we did. We built this thing. It's just like E.T. One of the greatest special effects that, yeah. Um, Suzanne, she meets her, and I think down here, boy, the room also, she comes down and. Uh, well, she's, she's, she's uh, hoarding the food for themselves. Yeah, she's, she's gone full and crazy. Yeah. That's right, because yeah. they're rationing the food and only giving out like four or five cornflakes at a time. That's like and drinking champagne. That's all they have. Champagne and cornflakes. She goes I mean, down to the, uh, the mess hall, then the pantry. Where she's because why is all the food poisoned? Yeah, I got in there. And they can't poison the. So wait, they're born now. Like <laughs> I think it, it it touched everything. I think is what they're saying. Like it got in there and was just like munching up the bread and scratching all the boxes. And I don't know. They don't go into it too much. It's not clear. Okay, it's but that clear. would explain what happens there because of course she eats some of the bread and she's like, "Huh, it's fine. Fuck those guys." And then Ooh, the cat breadcrumbs sitting on a shelf delicious yeah well i mean she's only had like seven cornflakes today probably all day so i mean yeah uh but then she sees the cat it looks like a normal cat she's like oh my god it's the cat and then she's like no wait i'm the one who rescued you it's my fault that you're on this ship because i picked you up out of that garbage can had to bring you aboard you wouldn't hurt me and right then i was kind of like is the, well this would be an interesting dynamic if she you know because sean's joking during the movie like you know she's turned into a cat woman and it's like, well, maybe I'm like, did she get scratched or bit or something? Maybe there is some kind of like, uh, you know, the cat is like, oh, that's mama. You know, she's the one who, uh, who brought me here, but no, that doesn't happen mm-hmm. right at that moment. Uh, she realizes that yes, indeed the thing is poison. And she starts growing a blood goiter on her neck that explodes <laughs> or actually she blood has goiter. to, she has to manipulate it. Cause it's one of those that's like, it seemed like the rubber just kept on inflating and didn't actually burst. So you can almost hear the director in your head off screen going like, just reach up that scrap, it, grab it, crush it, man, burst the thing. And so she's trying to, and so they cut away at that moment to the cat. When they cut back, the blood's all over the place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it was clearly, she was trying to pop the, the, I was wondering what happened because I blinked and she was bloody. And I'm just like, Whoa. Yeah. We mm-hmm. did not get to see it. I think that was the actor trying to help the special effects crew along. <laughs> And uh, with that, so that leaves only um, Walter and um, the bi- the biologist and the captain. They're the only ones left alive at this point on the boat, right? Boats filling up with water. What are they going to do? How are they going to get off this thing? The toy boats filling up water. What are you talking about? <laughs> Apparently, some of the scenes uh, later in the movie during the storm were shot in the director's pool. <laughs> Uh, using a toy boat and I'm guessing a hose, <laughs> uh, and, you, and you can tell. That's yeah, the bit. lightning effect killed me too. <laughs> oh, it's the great. Lightning looked like a straight up matte painting being just like shown a flashlight on it. Yeah, it so probably was in there with it and then runs out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no sense of scale or anything. It is clearly a toy boat in somebody's pool. Um, you know, just shot in slow motion and during a you know with the hose. And uh, I, now I forget what happened to Walter at the end of this. He, um, he he's uh, they're they're uh, loading up the uh, lifeboat to get out of there, and Walter's got to go back for his third briefcase of money, right? Um, and he gets uh, and guess who's guarding it? <laughs> Is it sitting there on the shelf? 
Did it scratch his face up? Was that what happened to him? He got all scratched up. I can't remember if he went over the edge or not. No, he got uh, he, he got attacked in the water. <laughs> it looked like he was getting he, drowned by a cat. Oh, that's yeah, right. He was floating in the water. Remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because a little bit, uh, because that's where it was like, wow, that fake cat leg, like right by his face there. He's, yeah. Um, but the other two, they get in the lifeboat, right? And they're like, we're gonna get out of here. It's fantastic. The boat sunk, right? They're yep. in the lifeboat, and then all of a sudden, the boat's going down. <laughs> the lifeboat's sinking. <laughs> Uh, and they're they're getting like this is like a hurricane going on because they're getting blasted with water that's going sideways at this point. They're just like, yeah, it's and, they're very uh, obviously in a pool because it's complete darkness all around. Right, except the, for one uh, spotlight somewhere up in the corner. The several garden hose, uh, uh, do it yourself in your backyard. In fact, what'd you say it was two hundred thousand dollars? This movie was yep. made for mm-hmm. it looks it, uh, but then the demon cat shows up. And is like rawr, rawr, at the end of the boat. Yeah. Oh. Independent of the bigger cat, right? Like yeah. the small cat is finally completely crawled out of the big cat. Yeah. <laughs> and wow. Yeah. And oh, oh, we get my favorite thing: people wrestling with inanimate objects, <laughs> <laughs> inanimate, inanimate, inanimate monster dolls. It's the best. It and is. Twice. Yeah, because, because they threw it off. It. They threw it and off. He and throws it off the boat, and then it's like. Oh shit! <laughs> he said we're not done yet. No, yeah. oh, we're not done yet. And he cut he back the little thing going. Meow, meow. The second attack. Yeah, I was <laughs> he laughing. Again. And he comes up with the conclusion that it's just like we're the only thing that's floating. He's going to keep coming back to us. So they empty their the money out of one of the briefcases and throw it into the water, and the fucking cat gets on it and just stares at them as they yes. float away. That was, that was great. I mean, aside from the, you know, <laughs> through tears of laughter, I was able to actually like see that moment. I'm like, look right. at that, that little demon gargoyle cat sitting on the top. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> as they kind of, the camera just pulls back from it. It's just sitting there glaring on oh. the top of this briefcase as it sits on the, Oh, good. on the water surface well they make it to land or listener we're not gonna you know spare you any detail here they do survive <laughs> they make it to to dry land in the cayman islands and i guess are able to open up an account or something they see austin stoker who just appears for one scene he was a star of assault on precinct 13 right he appears as i think like was he like a cop or a banker or something like that who he was he was a cop he was like the like the captain or chief or something. Of you know when you get to yeah. an island and there's one cop, he's the cop. Mm-hmm. But that's it. He's the <laughs> well, police and force. Counting their story. He's like, yeah, they're recounting their story to him, and he's like, oh, okay, so a cat attacked you. Like it's that kind of scene. Yeah, but they are financially. It was, it was very like, well, that was one hell of a story. <laughs> <laughs> but they are financially set up, right? They did get the money that they dumped out of the briefcase, right? It would appear so. Yeah. Okay, so they're yeah. set up, going to have a happy ending. But wait, there's a kicker as we cut to a beach somewhere. Is there? I call bullshit on this kicker. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I think this might be like a, my favorite ending. A ever. different <laughs> cat shows up on the beach. Maybe the the little cat went inside a different cat. Yeah, well, that's what is, I'm that what is that what we're supposed to uh, think at this point? I, th- I think that's what we're supposed to take from it, yeah. It may have that power, right? That's how it, it survives. It just crawls inside other. It's yeah, see, right. There's so much until the sequel, right? Well, there's so much unexplained by this thing. Like, yeah, how does it work? I mean, is that whatever? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Can it just jump inside think, other people? I don't, think, I don't think logic was anyone's goal in this movie. <laughs> no, it, I, it, it really is. They just decided to base it off of a visual idea of a cat coming out of another cat. We're not going to explain why or how or what it's doing or anything. It's just like, look, every once in a while, cat pops out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The people in the lab are like, I don't. This shampoo is not having the effect we thought it would. <laughs> but this movie literally ends in a freeze frame. A kid picking up this cat he found on the beach. Dun dun. dun. <laughs> and then the dramatic zoom in. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love it. This kid's <laughs> stupid face. Yep. Fade to black. <laughs> Oh man, it was it's a it's a ride. <laughs> this movie takes you through yeah, highs and lows. Just, yeah, fuck the Jaws ride at Universal. I want this. Yeah, <laughs> we, could, we could do this, right? We that could replace. Yeah. You just yeah, need a little sure. toy. But 
Cat, some just, bathing suits. Just cats jumping out of the water. Yeah, a video game. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I'd say. So are you in the video game? Are you playing the cat? I, or, no, I think it's like Alien Isolation, where you're trying to not get attacked by the cat. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're, you're confined to the ship, and you have to like hide and outsmart it. And at a certain point, I want there to just be like a bunch of cats on the ship. I thought there was in one scene, uh, but I think it was, we were supposed to think that the cat was just moving around so quick that uh, the dude with the gun down in the, the bowels of the ship was like, oh, where is it? But for some reason, they like, you know, he looks one way and then we cut to a cat and then he looked another way and we cut to the cat again and then he fired another way. And I'm like, what happened? What's, you know, are there other cats coming out of uh, the dead people or something? But no, missed opportunity. Yeah, there was only the one cat. And the demon cat. Wait for the sequel. We don't know if the one, the orange cat is still out wandering around. Well, no, we do know it collapses, right? It deflates. And then the cat, the inside, the spirit cat so. gets out. And then it has to crawl back in through its mouth. Maybe there's see deleted that. scenes on the Blu-ray that fill in more of the story. You'll have to let us know. Sean. Yeah. Once you pick it up. Okay. We'll I'll tell now. you what, uh, thank you for sticking with us this long. We're going to go around the room. <laughs> We're going to tell you what we thought about this movie, but first, we're going to let you join in the fun. We're going to answer some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I don't want, I don't want to know the side of Igor. I was going to say, has anyone checked to see if there's another Igor inside his mouth? <laughs> yeah, do we need to x-ray Igor? <laughs> well, that's Igor right. Away. That's how it started off, right? With, like, the doctors going, what is that on the x-ray? There's something. Well, let's yeah. get it in here and find out what's inside it. Oh, right. Bring in the specimen. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think maybe that's they were right. trying to they were trying to knock the cat out with that serum so they could actually investigate, but it got loose. Mm-hmm. Uh, now it all now it's all clear. There you go. <laughs> I understand everything now. <laughs> that cleared everything up. <laughs> yep. Well, I'll tell you what, listener, uh all you gotta do to write in and we'd love to hear from you. We'll read your comments on the air. All you have gotta do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Sat Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or perhaps you like email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or Instagram. At Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, Harky C writes in. Actually, Harky C left left us a review. There you go. We love it. When, oh. If you leave us a review, we will read those too on uh, iTunes or wherever oh, you leave them. Let's go either way. Harky C says, Every host is great and brings and each brings their own things to the table. Many movie podcasts I find to be very disorganized, but this one is different. No one talks over each other. Everyone is clearly having fun, even with bad movies, and it's all just great. I look forward to my descent into the basement each week. Aw, that's really nice. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. If we're talking over each other now, we apologize. It's because of Skype, and there's a little... It's because we can't hear each other. Yeah, Yeah, it's our fault. Sorry. (laughs) Uh, About tonight's movie, Uninvited, Dave Forbes writes in, and says the one takeaway from this movie is that they must have been really proud of that puppet puppet effect, either the hollow Dudley toy or the retarded sock puppet, or maybe both. They can't stop showing. <laughs> I'd be proud. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to see them like out of context? Like I just see what they look like not on a film set, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I think we've seen it in this, right? I mean, it was covered from pretty much all angles in unflattering light. <laughs> look what I did. $10,000. Um, Nelson Nascimento says, I'll be damned. I have to admit, here's something I've never heard of before. I'll be sure to rectify that. This looks like it's going to be a wild one, <laughs> which begs the question, yeah. listener, do you like it when we, when we review movies that you have heard of, or do you like going on the adventure with us and exploring the stranger side of, uh, you know, cinematic, the cinematic dumpster, <laughs> you'll have yeah. to let us know. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> Good question. What? There's only one side that's strange in the dumpster. It's the dumpster. <laughs> the strange side. Of it. <laughs> um, B movie poster vault says regarding the uninvited, or as I like to call it, George Kennedy versus demonic normal. I've seen this a few times. It's the uh, Garfield, right? 
Nermal? Yeah. Uh, seen this a few times, both straight up and the Rift Tracks version. It's seriously one of the most bonkers concepts for a movie monster. A rat cat looking mofo that only needed to be encased in a dog to complete the critter turducken. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> Has to be the low point of George Kennedy's career. And that guy got to do a ton of schlock until the naked gun rescued him. <laughs> well, there's, there's so sequel. much potential. Right. There's so much potential for a sequel. Well, you do that, and then you end the movie with it being a prequel to The Thing. <laughs> there you it's go. It's the dog from The Thing at the end. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, oh, this is a fantastic piece of crap. In both planning and execution, this is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in my life. I really don't want to spoil this for you because it needs to be experienced firsthand. It's also free on Pluto TV as a Rift Tracks or Tubi. This is Schlock with a capital Schlock. Awesome. Teresa Love Ann it. says this film strays in Pet Cemetery fueled my childhood fear of cats. I used to ball my eyes out whenever I went to someone's house who had cats when I was very young. Now I'm a cat lover and currently own three, but I can't wait awesome. for the childhood feline PTSD with this episode. Can you imagine yeah. seeing this as a kid? No. no. <laughs> Mom, is that going to happen to us? Yeah. You is never know. Is going to kill us? <laughs> what lurks inside? A little, yeah. Uh, Brent Zemecki says, oh, God, this movie is absolutely insane. It's like a Russian nesting doll made of cats. <laughs> and reader 17 I have, I have these examples like, <laughs> these are good we, yeah. we hit a nerve with this one <laughs> reader 1717 says i was rooting for the mutant cat the entire time uh yes, last week's sure. movie was the town that dreaded sundown splash 96 jams says like this one up for five bucks at walmart in the late 90s because of the name drop and scream i remember being genuinely terrified by the trombone scene i also remembering looking like it was made for three hundred dollars <laughs> not far off. oh no that was several million right what what was the budget on that what was that it was like 200 uh, i think it might have been the same budget as this one oh, i wow. mean if you think about it then we had a ton of like period centric cars yeah you right. know, think yeah. about all the old cars they had to rent for that movie yep. plus yeah, 10 years sure. earlier would have gotten the two hundred thousand dollars would have gone uh, a little bit further i guess um about uh, the previous week's episode, which was Resident Evil Apocalypse, uh, we described the movie as being a loose adaptation of the game. Carson Snar said loosely is being way too generous. Brent Zemecki mm -hmm. said you almost have to respect Paul W.S. Anderson for making your wife the lead of six movies and writing them around her so much the actual game characters mm -hmm. fall by the wayside. And it has him covered for so many Christmases and Valentine's Days. <laughs> there you go, isn't well, it? Uh, that's a choice. CJ Lewis says even when they do add in the game characters, they're so far off their video game counterparts, they may as well have been killed off with the rest of the unmemorable characters that serve as zombie fodder in each film. You guys were criticizing Jill Valentine's tube top, but Apple Leva says, I think your top looks nice. Well, I didn't say anything about I the yeah. I didn't say anything about the way it looked. Oh. Well, Marcos <laughs> Marcos yeah. Cobra 18 says it's an awesome movie with gorgeous ladies. G Money, he's talking about Oded Fair, right, who was in the movie. He says forget the mummy, which is what we remembered him for. He says anytime I see to see Oded in a movie, I always think of Antoine in Deuce Bigelow. Eh, I forgot. That's the first time I ever saw him. Yeah. Well, Jacob Kotner says these movies, the Resident Evil movies, are an exercise in patience. Every sequel to the semi-decent original promise the game in the trailers and give you everything but, yeah, the characters you love are here, but none of the quality. And for some reason, I watch these all in a row every few years. And every time I wonder why. He says Apocalypse isn't the worst, but man, it's bad. And I love you guys. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> uh jacob i i share your affliction i i watch them all in a row every, every couple you guys of are sick. yeah i don't know it is. and uh splash jams uh or splash 96 jams also wrote on about this one said great episode the 2002 flick that's the original is my favorite piece of junk food cinema and i would love to hear the team revisit the first one but it sounds like that'll be unlikely short of colin's sadism Pity, because I think that it's a load of fun. It's a sci-fi horror schlock. Like I was never offended by the 2002's movie characters. I'm just here for an evil corporation developing monsters as weapons. 
And that's all you need. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> now you have this movie. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. This could have been, I mean, why not? It could have been a Resident Evil movie. They just need to put somebody in. Yeah. How come this hasn't been chosen as a, wait, no, there was a Resident Evil that it's, took place what, on a this ship. This one's got as many characters as the fucking Resident Evil movies do, so. Yeah, but this wasn't a Resident Evil scenario. They they did one on a boat. That oh, was for the GameCube or what? No, not for the, the, the placing the portable game, Game Boy Advance yes, or what? Yeah, I can't. Uh, I think it was oh, the boy. Game Boy. Revelation. Right. Colin's like the game. Gear. Resident Evil. The game gear. Revel- yeah, I can't remember. Okay, so uh, now we're going to tell you what we thought individually. We're going to review Uninvited. We're going to go around the table, metaphorical table, and we're going to start with Holly. Holly, you get first crack at the cats tonight. What did you think about tonight's movie, Uninvited? Uh, this movie was an experience, to say the least. It was bonkers we've we've watched some strange cat movies on this on this podcast and this one this one's up there i i i was not prepared for what we experienced tonight i wasn't prepared but um i was also not disappointed by any means this movie was fun it was like i i can't even like i feel like we can't even really talk about like the technical aspects of this movie it was just crazy shit and i loved every part of it i i can't even parts of it i was like is this weekend at bernie's but on a yacht with a cat right. like <laughs> very weekend at bernie's vibe I, right and god loves god god knows i love weekend at bernie's so sign me up for a crazy demon weekend at bernie's cat i'm in 100 percent. and i think everyone should watch this stupid crazy movie yeah so absolutely two enthusiastic thumbs up for for, the, for uninvited sean what did you think um i didn't know anything about this movie and thank god coming in coming in <laughs> to tonight um i was very surprised um it's a very dumb movie but yeah it's, i've i haven't it's laughed consistently at a movie like this in a long time <laughs> and just like out loud laughing at the shit that just that pops up on the screen um it's incredibly funny uh mm-hmm. it's not supposed to be but it is um and i had a I real good sometimes time I think it is. sometimes i think it is supposed to be funny i don't know i can't tell but i'm not yeah. i don't but I'm not going to break my brain thinking about it. It's not the brain trying to figure out like why this and that and what was the uh, you know why you know what was their motivation for doing this? Fuck all that. It's just a mutant cat with a cat inside of it <laughs> on a boat killing people. Um, fantastic. Uh, uh, maybe I'll buy the Blu-ray. Oh, uh, <laughs> You're getting closer. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But uh, uh, I expect the text tomorrow that you watch it. I mean, it's only a one ninety nine rental on Amazon as well. Um, but yeah, I, I give it um, I give it two thumbs up. But then my little cat inside comes out and gives his two thumbs up <laughs> as well. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cheeto. Cheeto. yeah. Cheeto, 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 uh, Cheeto's asleep in a chair. Uh, wait, Cheeto. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're good. Cheeto recommends. So yeah, you should watch it. It's fun, Colin. Yeah, holy shit, guys. I mean, this is, uh, this was, um, it, surprising. It, it's a terrible, 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 terrible. I mean, it's one of the worst movies ever made, but the entertainment value is through the roof. I mean, it was so funny watching that. I mean, like, just howlers all the time, <laughs> especially, I mean, it ended well, you know, that like, yeah. it's still garbage. We're not out of this yet. And the little thing comes back up. I mean, <laughs> terrorized by a puppet. I mean, it's okay. just, uh, yeah. I mean, you could easily, I suppose, make like the comedy, you know, version of this, uh, the seriousness. That's what I love about these movies. When they all, they think they're being serious. They think they're making a horror movie, but they actually made a comedy, you know, Mm -hmm. that's what endears you to them. That's kind of, that's the thing you can't replicate whenever they try to make like a instant cult movie. They're too in on the joke. It's like, these people are not joke, (laughs) you know? Um, yeah, I, it, it just um, uh, you know the mind boggles at like how in the hell what was going on that poor george kennedy uh was in this movie like that you know his career was on such a he had to pay alimony 
or pay for a house or <laughs> something. <laughs> I mean, the guy kept on working, you know, for, uh, and, and I mean, everything, not everything that he did, obviously was, he was, wasn't he in a movie called ghost ship too, or am I thinking of something? Anyway. Um, yeah, I, I thought the actors actually did better than they were required to. There's uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, it's a sexy movie. You know, there's a lot of uh, women in bikinis, you know, there's gore. Uh, the gore effects aren't horrible. You know, well, there's a lot of blood anyway. Um, the characters, you know, running around yelling at each other. And then we got to get off this boat. It was fun to watch, uh, I guess. So it kind of checked all the boxes of what you want from like an exploitation movie like this. And uh just the level of insanity and how things would crank up all the way to like, we're pulling out all the stops for this. Uh, I think you got to check out uh, the uninvited. I mean, just cause we're, you know, it's a cat that lives inside another cat. <laughs> that, that idea alone right there is crazy, crazy. <laughs> Next one, they got to bring the government in. That's what I want to see. They, the, they got to have like that night of the leap ascending where there's a whole bunch of them attacking a, a town and we got to bring in the army. A bunch of cats just lining up and then ready. Aim, their mouths open, fire! <laughs> Fucking, they shoot smaller cats at the yeah, army. Yeah, yeah, see? That's what I'm talking about. The, right. the unlimited potential. Unlimited potential! Of, <laughs> of Uninvited 2. Michaela, what did you think of the movie? Uh, I mean, is this movie garbage? Yes. Uh, but should you still watch it? Absolutely. Like it's. I mean, I can honestly say I've never seen a movie like this before. And probably never will again. Like, this... There's no confusing this with another movie, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, I really would love to see this at the drive-in sometime. I, I think you'd like, get a great reaction at the drive-in. Oh, absolutely. This is perfect uh, drive-in material. This, or, this would be great at the uh, the music box in Chicago yeah. with a full crowd. Oh. Put it put it in with um, Strays and uh, Sleepwalkers, and oh my God, you got like the ultimate cat movie drive-in lineup, you know? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, I mean, man, like, I feel like we can't fail when it comes to bringing cat movies on this show. Like, every time I'm like, wow, that is crazy, but I loved it every single time. So, man, this one's got to be the, I don't know, I don't even know if I can say it's the weirdest, because Sleepwalkers is still really weird. But, Sleepwalkers is weird, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But this one, I mean, it's just so cheesy, so stupid. It doesn't make any sense, but these are all reasons to watch it so you i mean you have to watch it you're i'm sure we sound insane talking about it It probably (laughs) sounds like we're exaggerating things we are not we are trying our best with how our brains have been fried by this movie what we just saw and we really just watched it so so fried um, i might buy a (laughs) blu-ray i'm sure it's already already amazon prime truck on the way here (laughs) But yes, you absolutely have to watch Uninvited. Go buy the Blu-ray. Go pay the one ninety nine to stream it. <laughs> Every other movie we've had to stream has been like three times this much for rental. This is a very cheap rental. So yeah. go do it. Give those people money. They deserve it. Yeah. Well, all right. So that's uh, that's Freak Show approved. That's, that's Universal Claim <laughs> right there. Yeah. <laughs> so you must see the Uninvited. Or Uninvited. Sorry, not the. Yeah. Just Uninvited. All right. Well, next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Holly. Holly, uh, you got, I mean, top that. We're watching next week. <laughs> it's T-Wish. <laughs> you got to go a whole, you got to go a whole different direction. Oh, we're going in for direction. That's for damn sure. Um, yeah, I was thinking about my pick. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I feel like I should change my pick now, but I'm committed. We're doing it. We're going to watch Phantoms. Ah. Nice. <laughs> that, uh, I've been this on my list for a while. So, <laughs> is that nice. Peter Weller? A rewatch. Is that the Peter Weller fan? Am I thinking of the right Phantoms. movie? Okay. Oh, man, like Phantom. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Phantom. Peter Weller fan. Yeah. What am I thinking of? What was it? Like what? <laughs> huh? one and only Phantoms. All right. Well, I haven't seen this movie. That's right. <laughs> no, I've never seen Phantoms. This will be a first time. Yeah, oh, and then I got to figure right. out what the Peter Weller movie that oh. I've been the Mandela infected <laughs> by uh, over here. Okay, all right. So next week, Phantoms from the '90s uh, on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs> <laughs>